organization has to be divided into a meaningful segments. That means meaningful segment is proper segmentations. In that sense, if meaningful segmentation has been done or units such as divisions, departments, branches and many more. Each unit has certain activities to perform. The managers of each unit are assigned specific authority and responsibility to carry them out. So how it would be resolved that? The units of an enterprise for the purpose of control are called responsibility centers or decision centers. That means whoever so is trying to resolve this concern or responsibility or the unit and enterprise are trying to control that activity, it's considered as a responsibility center or a decision center. Suppose any accounting policies or accounting issues need to be resolved who will looking after that accounting department is looking after that that means this particular task and responsibility has been handled by accounting centers or accounting decision centers a responsibility center is a unit of an organization under the supervision of a manager who has the responsibility for act the activities of that responsibility center that means the center has been given the work under the organizations and the supervisions for a manager to achieve a responsibility on the basis of a responsibility center. In other words, a responsibility center can be defined as an organizational unit with a specific purpose to be fulfilled under the supervision of the given manager who solely bears the responsibility for its performance. So this is a responsibility center is concerned. There are four types of responsibility centers like cost center, profit center, revenue center and investment center. Let's discuss one by one. First is cost center. A responsibility center is referred to as a cost center when the manager is held responsibility for the cost incurred. It means that the manager who is looking after the cost centers, he has to identify how much cost has been incurred, which are the cost centers, which cost has been part of the important concern and to be delivered and decentralized to the respected heads, maybe administrative cost, maybe a selling and distribution cost, maybe a manufacturing cost, maybe a factory cost, so whatever it is. So cost centers do not generate any incomes or revenue directly. This type of responsibility center is found in production or a manufacturing organization. So ultimately the cost centers is concerned with the manufacturing part or production part. For an example, the foreman of a painting department in a factory is responsible for the amount of paint used, labor cost and the other additional expenditures regarding the painting would be incurred for this cost. So all this cost has been incurred to be responsible with the cost centers. Moving to the next center is revenue center. Revenue center is all about how much amount of revenue has been generated by the organization, which are the sources of revenue, how much revenue has been incurred, what are the durations, tenures, these are the things to be concerned under the revenue center. It is a small segment, but it's a very important part in which the manager or any person to whom the duty is assigned is responsible for the generation of a revenue. They are not concerned with the cost aspects that they don't have to looking after the cost but it is the part of an organization whose main task is to generate the sales revenue or maybe another part of revenues they do not assume that any authority over the cost control as per the definition of cima revenue center as a center devoted to raising the revenues with no specific responsibility for the production. So this is all about a revenue center. Now profit center. A profit center is that segment of the organization which is concerned with both revenue as well as cost. 
because of the profit center has to identify the how much amount of profit at the different levels so that is why they need to concern with both cost centers as well as the revenue centers they will ask the data and information from both the centers and then they analyze their profitability of the organization a profit center is that the segment of the organization which is concerned and their main aim to maximize the profits by either controlling the cost or increasing the revenue ultimately they would be identified and giving a direction to the cost centers that try to reduce the cost and other informations and direction to be given to the revenue centers to try to increase your sales and earn more amount of revenues a profit center provides more effective assessment of the manager's performance as both cost and revenues are measured in a monetary terms more so profit is a better measure of one's accomplishment that means the pro on the basis of profitability or on the basis of uh, profit concern it is a perfect measurement to work accomplishment a profit center manager is motivated to make decisions about inputs and outputs that increase his center's profit so on the basis of the inputs which are given and according to the inputs what are the outputs of the particular center and then it would be increase the center's activity as per the cima defines that as a part of a business accountable for cost and revenue it is a profit center then move for the next center that is investment center the definition as per the um, concern um, institute that is the investment center as a profit center whose performance is measured in its return on capital employed so the how much amount of return on capital employed that is basically of profit center so on the basis of that the investment center has been designed the further activities or their tasks and their resolutions the objective of an investment center is to maximize the center's return on investments roi has to be improved in the different part that means their main object only how the improvisation of their return on investments a responsibility center is called an investment center when its manager is responsible for cost and revenue as well as for an investment in assets used by the center so investment center is all about the part of this concern the manager of an investment center is required to earn a satisfactory return that is an again important part so it means the manager has to looking after that whether the organization has an enough amount of return on their investments or not so that is their big task so investment center has to design a systematic and target and pre standard roi return and on the basis of that they would be find out their plus and minus effect of their plans or their task major segments of the companies are normally investment centers running so the company are actually having their investment centers and the different different goals and tasks to be given to this center an investment center differs from a profit center in that as investment center is evaluated on the basis of rate of return on capital employed and assets invested in the respective segment while a profit center is evaluated on the basis of excess revenue over the expenditure for the pe specific period of time so this is all about uh, particular centers next topic is transfer pricing transfer pricing is actually a hot topic in these days if you are actually observing the vodafone is also facing a transfer pricing issue from last almost 5 to 7 years here what is a transfer pricing when a company has its production unit located in different places or has a multiple manufacturing units it is likely in this situation to have interdivisional transfer of goods and services which might potentially affect the pricing so here many time if you are going to manufacturing the product in this particular area or maybe you are manufacturing the product some far away from this place 
their production cost their identification cost of the same product if you are going to compare with the here manufacturing cost would be different so when you are transferring these goods from here to somewhere else and from there to here or maybe somewhere else it creates a different different pricing so that pricing would affect a transferring the commodity and services and goods which are creating a transfer pricing issue in such companies a satisfactory system of transfer pricing is necessary for measuring the performance of different departments or division that means we need to identify the necessary steps to be taken measurement of the performance of different departments or divisions and then identified what is the common pricing level or maybe a pricing which are actually required to transfer the services as well as the goods a transfer pricing is necessary for measuring the performance of different divisions a transfer price is that value at which goods and services are transferred between the divisions in a decentralized form normally the transfer price arises when the goods have certain intermediate value in the market so the market value is different and the transfer pricing is actually a different at that point of time may be creating some transfer pricing issues objectives of sound transfer pricing first transfer price should help in the accurate measurement of divisional performance so when you performed perfectly accurately the transfer pricing would helpful in case of if the decentralized activities are there it helps in motivating the divisional managers in maximizing the profitability of their divisions and making decisions effective so if the transfer pricing is perfectly work then the divisional managers are identified their concern and increasing their profitability with proper distributions between the divisions and decisions it ensures the autonomy and authority preservations that means if the goals are very comfortable as well as it if work together it would not be creating any issue it prevents the manipulations of pricing between divisions or departments during the transfer so if the manipulation has not been happened the work would runs very smoothly now we are going to discuss methods of transfer pricing let's begin with the first market based pricing in case of market based pricing when the product transfers from one division to the other it will be priced as per its current value in the market if it is offered for sale in the market so the understanding is very much clear that whenever you are transferring the goods from one division to another division whatever the price is running in the market the price has been transferred from one place to another which price would be affected market price would be affected rather the cost price or any other price this method is thus used to resolve the conflict among the buying and selling divisions and both will be actually or we can say equally satisfied and benefited in the case of that it saves administrative cost as well next is cost based pricing it means when the external market price is not available sometimes it happens when the product external prices is not easily available in the market so in that point of time the first method may not be uh, may not be effective so in that case when the external price is not available or it does not exist then this method is applied in case of that the cost based transfer pricing the companies can adopt it any of the following mention or concern of the cost in transfer pricing like a variable cost can be considered full cost that mean whole cost with total cost would be considered full cost plus profit also to be considered standard cost will be considered and opportunity cost also can be considered next method is negotiated pricing negotiated pricing is transferred as an intermediate solution between the market price 
the third method is very simple here instead of the market price or a cost price there should be some negotiable prices so that means how the negotiable is the pricing can be adopted in that sense so in that sense intermediate solutions is between the market price and the cost price we need to identify some common price which would be possible between both the departments the departments one who are transferring the goods and services to other department and the department another who are actually trying to purchase or get the uh, goods and services from the one department in this case the companies may decide the price mutually and settle the issue the main advantage of the system is that it offers advantages to both the divisions and the organization as well this is possible when both the divisions have choice to identify their alternative next is incremental pricing another approach to transfer pricing is the incremental cost in the selling division incremental cost it means the amount of cost has been changed when the increase of the number of units produce the difference between the previous productions and the current productions whatever the cost has been changed that is an incremental cost so incremental cost can be computed in two ways depending on the circumstances in each case and then the entire production or